In this video, I'm going to show you how to analyze and visualize data that has varying frequency content, which is a lot of fun and makes for some really pretty uh, plots and visualizations. This is part of a four part series on frequency analysis, power spectral densities, fast Fourier tra transforms. Uh, so please subscribe to our channel and check out the other videos. Like the other videos, I'm going to be using the open source NDAC Python library, and I'm sharing the Python code that was used to generate these plots. You can install that library at pip install NDAC. Uh, the documentation is docs.ndac.com. And like the other videos, I'm using the development branch because it has a, a few more features, but, uh, but you can use the release branch, which will be more stable. So let's get into it. I'm going to uh, start with some content that I fabricate, show you how to analyze that and visualize that, and then I'll get into a real world recording file. So first I fabricated a chirp uh, that has the, the chain, you know, generates a time signal with a frequency content that, that changes. And there's three different uh, varying ways to change that frequency content with a linear uh, trend, a logarithmic trend or quadratic. So here's the data in the time domain. You can kind of see, especially in the beginning, you know, it the, the sine waves get closer together as time goes on. Um, it's hard to see kind of in the, the higher frequencies because there's some aliasing that occurs. We're not kind of sampling fast enough. There's not quite aliasing, but visually there's aliasing. Uh, so then here's the log logarithmic. You can kind of see that again. It just, it just uh, ramps up a little faster, I guess. And then quadratic. Um, it has kind of a, a slope to it and how it increases the frequency content. So this is obviously fabricated. This is a necessary real world, although uh, some animals and I think maybe some real world events can have chirp like characteristics, but it makes for some good plots and then we'll use some real world data after. So first thing I'm gonna do is the ndac.calc.fft.rolling FFT function. There's a few parameters you can pass in, but but simply I'll just pass in the, the data frame that has my acceleration data or whatever uh, data you have, and then define my number of slices I want. Uh, you can, and I'll show later on, you can also explicitly def de de say where in the time you want to do these FFTs or PSDs or also shock response spectrums we have one for. But in the simplest case, you just you say the number of slices and it will evenly slice the recording. And so I did that. I have this resulting uh, data frame. It's basically a stacked data frame. So there's frequency, timestamp, and values for each one of the variables. So the linear, the quadratic, the logarithmic, and then there's a resultant that's automatically added. I can turn it off if I'd like. That adds a you know a, a root sum of squares of all the other uh, channels. So that can be helpful for acceleration content where you have you know three axes and you just want to see kind of the aggregate the resultant it's also helpful in this chirp example because it again makes for some cool looking plots so let's get into that once i have my rolling fft results or rolling psd results or also rolling shock spectrum results i can visualize it with our function ndac.plot.spectrum over time and all i do is i pass in that stack data frame of the the spectrum data which uh, value I want to use or I want to, to visualize uh, which variable. So in this case, I'm going to do linear and then the plot type. So the, there's a few different plot types. I'll go through them all here. And here's what's called the heat map. Uh, this is very much the spectrogram that that you kind of expect to see. And this is just one way to show it. And this is probably the standard, <clears throat> the nicest way, I'd say, to look at it. Now, I didn't do anything with scaling here. And, and you'll notice that when I zoom in, you know, my values are around uh, and they should be around 1G at these peaks because it's um, there's going to be there's some issues because it's not like a steady period of time that it's constantly at that frequency. So it's not quite at 1G, but it's close to that. And you can see that the Z, the the Z axis data, the kind of the color does have real engineering units uh, <clears throat> applied to it. So there you go. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to visualize the logarithmic chirp, and you see how that there's that different shape curve and the quadratic, which although looks pretty similar to the logarithmic. And then I did the resultant, and now you see kind of all three on once because I've done the root sum of squares, and that resultant data has um, has content from from all the signals. So that's a heat map. 
spectrogram uh, that's showing frequency content over time. Now let's play with some other elements to this. We can also do a surface plot. So it's, it's basically adding the third dimension visually, uh, not just with the color, but actually making it a, a surface plot, which is cool. And here it is, you can show that. Um, that's fun. That's a surface plot. And now here's a peak. So what's happening in this, when I call uh, the plot type a peak is it will find for every slice what the peak frequency is. And I could specify a min freak or freak min and a freak max to, to look at a specific range of, of frequencies. Um, so check out the documentation and see that. But this is now explicitly just plotting the peak frequency as a function of time. Now I'm going to recalculate the rolling FFT, but this time instead of doing 200 slices, I'm going to do 20. And I'm doing that because I want to show you a waterfall plot. So here's a waterfall. Uh, now there's ex there's explicit or yeah, explicit lines. Well, whatever per slice, and so I can see that here, and I can isolate one. I want to just look at this. Or I want to see all of them. It will default to color code them so you over time but you can turn that off and uh and make it just be one color i think if i i'm getting a little uh ambitious i will do that in real time let me see here i turn waterfall line color no turn waterfall line sequence to to false And then it will just be one color. There you go. Which might be a little bit more traditional. Uh, it depends. If you have a lot of segments, sometimes it's helpful to have the different colors. So you can kind of see that if it gets messy. There you go. Then you can do an animation. Uh, so here, it's for every segment, it's plotting it over time. Uh, and you can kind of actually play that out. It doesn't, it looks kind of silly for this particular chirp example, but it can be really interesting for other content and again you can explicitly kind of drag to different areas it is also plotting for the the animation the the total maximum and the total minimum as well as the total medium so then that was all the rolling fft there's also a rolling psd function and again there's a rolling shock spectrum i'm not getting into that right now because that's more shock related but same type of output and way to visualize the rolling PSD has more parameters than the FFT. You can use the simple ones like before, just doing chirps and the number of slices. But I also may want to have logarithmically spaced bins. So I'm going to do that here. So I'm saying start at, at 1 hertz and then do 12 bins per octave. So now I have logarithmically spaced. Um, and I'll just show you what this is. It looks like. <clears throat> So that's how the, the frequency bins are spaced. And now when I'm going to plot or generate this heat map, I can also say I want the log values to be uh, the values to be on a log scale, the colors here in this case, and the frequencies to be on a log scale. These parameters, log freak and log val, are true are, are available for any one of the plot types. Uh, when it's a heat map, it will make the color on a log scale. If it's a surface plot or a Waterfall plot, it will make that z-axis on a log scale. The other nice thing about rolling PSD is I can use that to actually def calculate RMS in specific frequency ranges. And I can specify that here by, by defining the freak split. So here I want to say I want to know the frequency content or the RMS in the frequency range from 1 to 10 hertz, from 10 to 50 hertz, and from 50 to 100 hertz. So then if I plot that, again, using the spectrum over time and use the plot type lines, I see, okay, here's the frequency content in the range of 1 to 10 hertz. It averages that. This is 5.5. And you see by the time we get to 15 seconds, now that it never, it never has any more content in, in that range ever again because we're doing these chirps. Uh, and then 30 hertz, you know, there's nothing in the beginning. Then it comes up as it's in that, that range, and then it goes away, and then 75. So <clears throat> this can be really helpful uh, to kind of see the specific air frequency ranges that you're interested in. Vehicles, you know, the, the low frequency range 
is tied to the, the speed of the, the wheel uh, and maybe the other content is more structural and, and of, of different interest. So this is a helpful way to look at that. Now let's get into some real world data. This is a recording that I, from many years ago, from 2016, when I put an NDAC device on my car engine, that car is still kicking, still running. Uh, I drove it to, into work and I measured the vibration of the engine in that drive. And I was sampling pretty quickly. You see it has it's about 12 million samples. Here's the time domain data. Uh, and now I want to do a rolling FFT. So do the rolling FFT, I say 500 slices, and then I visualize that as a heat map. Uh, I added another couple of parameters here. You know, I defined, I only want to see from 40 to 100 hertz. Um, and I did make log val as true. And if it, because if I, you know, sometimes the, it's helpful with the heat map to do that, to, to really uh, make that color on a log scale. Because if it's on a linear scale, it can, it can, um, I guess I'll just calculate it for you and I'll show you. Let's see, you don't really see as much information, but you still see generally what's going on, but the, the log scale can help. All right. Now I'm going to do a waterfall. And if you know, look up here, I can tell there's some specific periods of time that may be of interest, or I may know that from my time domain plot. And so here I'm going to, again, use the rolling FFT call and specify the index values. So I want to not just do blindly segment the file into 20 segments, but actually calculate at these specific times. And again, you can pass this in for rolling PSD or rolling shock spectrum. And, I'm, and I want a slice width of 10 hertz or 10 seconds at each one of these, um, these time ranges. So I calculate that and then I generate this waterfall. And so I see now these FFTs at all these different times that I explicitly asked for. Uh, and if I look at this first one that I grabbed, this is at 1205.51. There's a very predominant peak at 47 hertz and about 0.1 G. So now I just want to take a look at that data, which I'm going to do here. I'm going to grab that time range. So I grabbed from, uh, yeah, 49 to 53 seconds or so around that couple seconds around this center point. And then I am plotting it here. And if you notice, if I count it out through this full second, but if I just go through the first tenth of a second there's you know one two three four five ish peaks and if i calculate the fft and here i'm doing rft so i'm just i'm not trying to do any aggregate fft or rolling psd things like that I'm just doing the real for fast Fourier transform i see a peak frequency at 47 47 hertz at about 0.13 g's so that corresponds to my aggregate FFT, rolling FFT that I did. I also did over 10 seconds, um, but it's nice. There's real engineering units that you're getting that you can use to analyze. Now I'm going to calculate a rolling PSD on this uh, real world data. And, you know, I can specify F start at, of one Hertz and do three bins per octave. I'm just going to do 10 slices. And then I have basically 10 power spectral densities here. Um, and this might be a good one. I'll count. 10 slices might be a little bit light. Do 20 slices. Here's the, root, the the waterfall plot. And then I'm just going to also do the, the animation, I think, is nice for uh, PSDs. There you go. And that's that this is how you can analyze frequency varying frequency content over time using the open source and DAC library again please subscribe to our channel here and you get other videos on how to analyze vibration and shock data and hope you enjoy this is arguably the best part is generating some sweet plots that can impress yourself your friends and your colleagues and your customers enjoy